What's going on, you guys? It is your boy, the American F1 fan, Eric Ringel here, and it is season prediction time. We are just under a week away from the Bahrain Grand Prix. The testing is all said and done, and so it's finally time to make my predictions for the 2024 regular season. So let's get on to those predictions right now. So first we're going to go with the driver standings. Now I'm gonna go through the top, the the bottom 10 very quickly. We're just gonna kind of give a reasoning as to why each one of these guys is, I feel like they're going to be ranked in the position they're going to be ranked in. Starting with number 20 is Guan Yu Zhou from Stake F1 team. I just, I feel like he hasn't done enough with the team over the last couple seasons. It seems like he's almost regressed from when he was a rookie to, you know, to last season. He's not beating Valtteri on a regular basis. Valtteri has been showing signs still that, you know, he's still got what it takes to be in Formula One. And Guan Yu Zhou, you know, when they brought him in, they were hoping that he was going to be that guy that could be in the second seat next to Theo, uh, Theo Porcher, who was making his way up the Formula ranks in Formula 3 and Formula 2. Now, uh, Sauber, Steak, F1, whatever you want to call him, is now starting to think, is it time to now bring in Theo Porcher to partner along Valtteri Botas? And I just, I don't see how Guan Yu Zhou is going to make a, a huge step forward this season. So that's why I've got him ranked at number 20. So number 19, I've got Kevin Magnussen. I just think with, with Haas and the way the car is, is looking from last year into this year, I just I, I think it's time that it, I, I love Kevin Magnussen to death, but I think Haas needs to move on. Then at number 18, I've got Logan Sargent. I, I you know, as much as I want to see him really, you know, put to put the right foot forward and really lead Williams you know, to to be a better driver. I just don't necessarily see it. Uh, number 17, I've got Esteban Ocon. Um, and I think this is, I think this is uh, more a condemnation of Alpine and what they have and haven't been able to do in the off season. I just don't see the Alpine car being a car that's going to be able to fight the top midfield, uh, you know, the top midfield teams like they have in the last few years. Then moving on, I've got Valtteri Botas at number 16. Um, Valtteri has done a really good job with a Sauber team that, you know, really hasn't had the money to put in the cars and to really develop the car the way they wanted to. He's been able to drag that car into positions that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people really didn't expect Sauber and Alfa Romeo last year, now Sauber Stake F1. I think he's really been able to drag that car into a better spot. It's still not going to be enough, but I think Valtteri, Valtteri is going to be the lead driver at Sauber. Then moving on to number 15, you've got Nico Hulkenberg. Um, I, I think he's probably the lead driver that Haas has. Um, I would, moving forward, could see that Nico Hulkenberg gets paired up with somebody else at Haas F1 as long as they stay in the sport, so I've got him at number 15. Then moving on to number 14, I've got Pierre Gasly. Again, this is more of a condemnation against Alpine and, you know, what they haven't been able to do this offseason. But I think Pierre is still the much better driver at Alpine. Then going number 13, I've got Lance Stroll. I think Aston Martin in general takes a huge step back this year. And we just haven't seen the skill out of Lance Stroll that we've, you know, really expected even though, you know, his dad owns the team, I still think that, you know, he's really lacking in some areas. And I think confidence is one of them. So then moving on to number 12, I have Alexander Albon. I think he's the lead driver at Williams. And I think if Williams is smart, you know, before one of the other teams snatches him up, they need to get him signed to a long-term deal and really build that Williams team around Alexander Albon. Then moving into the last position in the bottom 20, or the bottom 10, you've got Fernando Alonso. And this is nothing against Fernando. I think he's a fantastic driver. I just think Aston Martin has been taking huge step, steps back since, you know, the middle of last season all the way into this season. Yes, during testing, we saw some really good glimpses out of Aston Martin, but it was more out of Fernando Alonso than it was out of Lance Stroll. And I just, I, I see the team continuing to struggle this year. 
So now moving into my top 10 list, I've got Yuki Sonoda at the 10th spot. And I really think Yuki has gone to prove himself within Formula One. He's been taking, you know, he's been taking steps every single season to get better. And, you know, pairing him up with Daniel Ricciardo, especially going into this season, is a really good move. I think he's really learned a lot. He really gets along with Daniel. And I think that really helps the team dynamic and it helps him in the long run. So that's why I've got him ranked at the number 10 position. Number nine, and I I honestly had a really tough time putting him here. I was almost going to put him up a little bit higher, but I've got Oscar Piastri at the number nine position. Now, this is nothing against Oscar, and I think his rookie season really proved in Formula One that he is going to be a driver that's going to be reckoned with. But with the McLaren team, it's a team that you know we know can make the steps forward, but we don't know how much of a step forward they made in, in the 2023-2024 offseason. You know, during testing, we saw signs that McLaren really didn't make the moves necessary to be chasing down a Red Bull team. And not to say that he's going to have a sophomore slump. I think still finishing in the top 10 in points is is not a slump by any stretch of the imagination. I just think... Oscar may take a little bit more of a step back because we know McLaren is building their team around Lando Norris, especially with the the long-term contract that they signed him to in the offseason. So my number eight, and it pains me, but there's going to be kind of another prediction that goes along with this. I've got number eight. I've got Sergio Perez. I just, it's a shame that Red Bull has really wasted the talents of, of Sergio Perez um, at Red Bull. They've, you know, yes, Max Verstappen is the number one driver, so you're going to tend to build a car around everything that, you know, Max Verstappen wants. But, like, it almost seems like Red Bull has not taken a- anything into account with Sergio Perez as far as, you know, feedback, you know, potentially ways of developing the car. And it just, it's it's continually showed signs, you know, since he's gotten to Red Bull. And, you know, I, I think he's more... He's more at a point in his career where it's just it's it's disheartening to see that a team is really not, you know, putting as much as they really could behind Sergio Perez. I mean, we saw it at the end of the 2022 season when, you know, the Max Verstappen Sergio Perez feud kind of reared its ugly head in Brazil. And then we saw it all of last season, you know, and now I just I, I truly think that that we're going to see the end of Sergio Perez at Red Bull. So to go along with that, my number seven is Daniel Ricardo. Now, Daniel, I think everybody was was pleasantly surprised that when he stepped into the Alpha Tauri last season, he absolutely, it almost seemed like he hadn't missed a step and was literally putting Alpha Tauri in positions that really most people didn't think he could put that car in. And this goes along to my other prediction, um, you know, for this Formula One season. And that is, I think, you know, about a third to uh, halfway throughout the season, I think Daniel Ricciardo and Sergio Perez are going to end up switching seats. Daniel's going to become a Red Bull driver and Sergio Perez will go to the Visa Cash App Red Bull team. My number six is George Russell. And I, you know, George Russell is is showing definite signs that he's, you know, as talented as everybody thought he was. Um, I still think that that Mercedes built a car around Lewis. Like, yes, they may have taken some of, you know, George's, um, you know, ideas, but I think a lot of it had to boil down to Lewis. And so now it's going to be a car that more suits Lewis than it does George. And I think that kind of tends to hamper him a little bit. Um, going into this season, I still think sixth is a great position to finish in, but I think Lewis Hamilton will pro- will finish higher. But I think George Russell, you know, is going to you're going to start to see the development start to be built around George Russell as we see the season progress, knowing that George Russell is going to be the lead guy going into 2025. My number five, and and I feel bad that he's been, you know, treated the way he has, and that's Carlos Sainz. I think he's going to finish fifth in the standings this season. I think Carlos Sainz is an amazing driver, and whatever team goes out there and signs Carlos Sainz, 
you know, bringing him in as, a, you know, that 1A, 1B guy, he's not necessarily the lead driver, but he's also not a number two driver. He's kind of that middle of the road. He's going to get you points, What you know, if you've got a good car. I, I would love to see, you know, who ends up signing him going into the 2025 season. But I still think, you know, Ferrari has made some improvements going into 2024, and I think he's going to get that car in positions you know, that a lot of people, including myself, may not necessarily think uh, Ferrari will be in. And Carlos Sainz will really push, you know, Charles Leclerc, just like he did last season in the battle at Ferrari. And he's going to make it, you know, really tough, you know, for a lot of Ferrari fans out there to say, you know, maybe Charles should have been the guy to go or, you know, maybe we should have just kept Carlos Sainz. I think, I think Carlos is going to prove to fans that, you know, maybe they were a little bit hasty in the decisions that they made. Moving on to number four, I got Lewis Hamilton. I think he's still right now at the top of his game with a car at Mercedes that, you know, they just haven't been able to get a handle on. You know, we've heard, you know, rumors of Toto saying that they've gained a second on that car, you know, maybe two seconds at times. I just, I don't know if they've necessarily gained that much. And I, I truly think that that's why Lewis has stepped away from the team going into the 2025 season and has moved on to Ferrari. But I still think he's going to put in one of those valiant efforts. He's going to be fighting for podiums a lot of times. You know, if they develop the car in the right way, we could definitely see a Lewis Hamilton eventually, you know, battling for wins. Um, I don't think it's going to be enough, though. And I, I've got him ranked at number four. So now moving on to my top three, I've got Lando Norris at number three. I think Lando has made huge leaps and bounds from the the fun-loving, you know, just jovial guy that McLaren had when he was a rookie. You know, we saw his personality, but I think he's starting to mature a little bit more in Formula One. We're starting to see a more serious side of of Lance, or no, excuse me, of Lando at times. Um, even though we did see one clip out there of Lando making fun of Lance uh, during Drive to Survive. But I think that Lando is going to make another huge step forward this season. I truly think that if McLaren can get that car going in the right direction, we could see Lando Norris fighting for wins. And I could see why Lando Norris would finish third in the driver's standing. So now moving on to my top two. Top two, I've got... Charles Leclerc finishing at number two. I just think that that Ferrari, you know, going into every season, they build that car around Charles and what Charles has, you know, been kind of asking for in the development of the car. We've seen, you know, more developments, you know, trying to get away from the, uh, from the, you know, one lap pace of the Ferrari to now being able to carry that pace over into the race itself. Um, I think Charles is going to consistently fight for wins. Um, but it, again, it's just not going to be enough. And my number one, I just, I, it, there, if it's broke, don't fix it. Max Verstappen is going to win his third consecutive driver's championship. I just don't see a, a world that we're living in right now where Red Bull is not, again, the, you know, the team that's just, you know, making the developments necessary to, you know, push themselves further and further away from the field. And Adrian Newey, you know, for as much as we give him, you know, some, you know, some crap for, you know, how old he is and how, you know, he's kind of, you know, developing cars in a way that, you know, most modern uh, Formula One engineers and, you know, for uh, designers do where they use, you know, the CAD system and whatnot. Adrian Newey still does everything by hand, and I still think he puts out such an amazing car, and it's just going to be hard to beat Max. I mean, he's just, he's on top of his game. He's focused, and I think after last season and not, you know, finishing the, you know, not, you know, winning Red Bull every single race last season, he kind of is going to take it upon himself to you know, to kind of right that wrong and try to get a win in every race for Red Bull this season. And I just, I, I see him being number one again. So now moving on to my team standing. So my number 10 team is the stake F1 team. We know that this is going to be moving to potentially Audi next season um, and or in 2026 as well. And, you know, 
I think this is one of those stopgap years where they're not going to spend a lot of money to, you know, to re- they're going to bring some upgrades, but it's not going to be enough to really push their team up to the, you know, finding the, the midfield, the top of the midfield standings. I think this is going to be a car that we're going to see, you know, updates come, you know, sparingly throughout the season. And I just don't think they're going to be a team that's going to fight like they did last season, you know, for a midfield spot. My number nine, and they have bit me in the ass every season I've predicted them higher, and I just don't see a reason why I need to predict them any higher this season, is the Haas Formula One team. Now, not to say that they haven't gotten, you know, their hands wrapped around the problems of, you know, the tire wear and, you know, having good one lap pace, but not, you know, being able to carry that over into race trim. I just think that, you know, Haas has started on such a back foot with, you know, waiting for so long to fire Simone Resta and to fire Gunther, which I called before, you know, before it happened, I said that they needed to move on. Um, I just don't, I think they've started behind the eight ball going into the 2024 season and I just don't know if they're going to have enough time to play catch up this season to really put themselves in a position to, you know, fight in the upper midfield. My number, my number eight team is Alpine. Now, I like I said, I feel like this team has taken some huge steps back over the last couple of seasons. They've kind of gotten around the reliability issue with the car, but now they're developing a car that you know is just not it's not designed well. You've got an engine that's putting out way less power than some of the other big teams within Formula One. And I just don't see how Alpine is going to be able to get the, you know, the problem wrapped around, you know, the the downforce on the car with an engine that's not nearly putting out as much power as a Ferrari or Mercedes or a Honda that Red Bull, you know, works on. I just don't see how they're going to be able to push that car you know, with not having the power that they are. My number seven team, and and, and I want to preface this by saying now we're starting to get in to a little bit, I think, closer of a, a of a group of cars that it's going to develop into a really good fight for the 2024 season as far as the midfield goes, and that is Williams. I think Williams is going to make vast improvements this season. And again, like I've said before, I think Alex, Alex Albon, um, needs to be the guy that they need to build this team around. I, Logan Sargent is, I just unfortunately isn't the guy, and Williams really need to stab him up before another big team like a Mercedes or you know a Red Bull you know pulls him back or you know whatever the case may be. I think Williams needs to step up now and sign him to a long term deal to really develop that car around him, and. I, but I still think Williams is going to do really well this season. I think Alex carries this team by far. I think Logan will score his points here and there, one or two points here and there. But I think Alex is going to be the guy like he has been the last couple seasons to really carry that team, you know, into a, you know, upper midfield battle. Like I said, now we're getting into the, this really upper midfield, upper tier battle of like, of teams that are going to be fighting for spots. And my number five, and this is, again, no sl- no slack, slack to them, is the Visa Cash App Red Bull team, or RB team, whatever you want to call them. It's really getting annoying. I'm just going to call them Team RB. But I think they're going to finish fifth in the standings. I think they've made a lot of improvements going into this season. And I think, you know, with Daniel Ricardo and Yuki Sonoda at the team, and I think eventually with Sergio, once they move Daniel over to the to the main team. I think this team is going to be pushing, you know, really hard to really make this team, you know, really believe that more updates, you know, keep improving the car, you know, we can eventually fight into the top four, the top three, you know, and really push some of these other teams like Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, we can try to push them down a little bit and really make a domination of, uh, you know, of Red Bull, um, in the top two spots. So I, I truly think that, that the Visa Cash App Red Bull team is going to make a huge step, and that's why I've got them at number five. Number four, I've got Mercedes. Again, I think the car has made some updates, and, you know, 
I think they're going in the right direction. I just don't know if that's necessarily in the direction that's going to, you know, keep them fighting for a top two position. And like I said, most of the teams have all, you know, kind of come a little bit closer together in the, you know, the upper midfield and top teams. They've all come closer together. So this is going to be a really good fight. I think we're going to look, you know, look at in the 2024 season. But I've got Mercedes in that number four position because eventually they're going to start developing this car around George Russell more than they will Lewis Hamilton. And I think that may make this car take a step back more than a step forward. But it's going to be more for the long haul and not for the short term game. My number three is McLaren. I just think McLaren has made the the changes that were necessary to really get this team back as a you know top tier team in Formula One to where they're fighting for wins, fighting for constructors' places, you know, in the top levels. I think McLaren showed signs last season that you know they can push Red Bull, um, you know, for for wins and for podiums and. I think they're going to push for potentially for wins as we get later into the season with updates that get brought to the car. We may see that uh, that McLaren may struggle a little bit. I just don't know if they did enough in making the changes needed going into this season. So that's why I've only got them at number three. Now moving on to my top two. There's just no way I can change Red Bull out of the top spot. I think Red Bull is the number one team in Formula One. Like I've said, they just, they've just they got such an amazing development team, you know, with Adrian Newey still at the top of his game, you know, just showing why he is like the GOAT of, you know, Formula One car designers. He's just, he's proved it time in and time out. Um, and he's, if all the rumors are true, like we are in for a very long season when it comes to Red Bull domination. And that means I've got Ferrari at number two. And I think Ferrari takes a huge step forward. I think, you know, we saw in testing that Ferrari has, you know, maybe gotten, you know, underneath the the one lap pace and more now has developed around a race pace that, you know, could cont- potentially contend for wins, you know, can contend against Ferrari or excuse me, of Red Bull. Um, but I just think in the grand scheme of things, Red Bull is just, they're not going to be hampered by not having the money to make upgrades this season um, like they were last season when they got penalized um, as much as they did for the budget cap break that they made in 2022. I just think that now with them having the money to you know produce upgrades, it's going to be a long season, I think, for the rest of the Formula One grid. And I think Red Bull is just, they're still the top team in Formula One. And I, I you know, I, I'm kind of kind of hoping we get to 2026 a little bit quicker but guys let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of my predictions for the 2024 formula one season are my top 20 drivers correct where would you guys rank those drivers and where would you guys rank each and each and every team guys let me know that in the comment section down below slap a like on this video and subscribe for more formula one videos throughout the season we've got live streams coming up of every Formula One race, but guys, thank you so much for watching, for watching this video, and guys, oh, the American F1 fan, I'm Eric Ringle, signing off.